Election night 2012 is finally here. The biggest office in the country at stake, the presidency. Voters also cast their ballots for North Carolina governor and numerous other races from Congress down to county commission. We have those results scrolling along the bottom of your screen. Let's begin with a race for president. Here's the latest look at how the electoral votes stack up. President Obama is behind with 173, Mitt Romney, close be, Mitt Romney ahead with 189. The Associated Press is declaring Mitt Romney the winner of this race, or at least taking North Carolina. Uh, the big other states, Florida, Virginia, and Ohio, are still not called, so this race could still shift in either direction. Now, voters in North Carolina elected the state's first Republican governor in 20 years. Former Charlotte Mayor Pat McCrory defeated his Democratic challenger, Lieutenant Governor Walter Dalton of Rutherford County. He becomes only the sixth Republican governor in the state's history. News 13's Frank Crocker and Russ Bowen have coverage from both campaigns. We're going to begin with Russ at Pat McCrory's victory party in Charlotte. Russ. Well, Larry, we have to tell you this really wasn't that unexpected because McCrory had been ahead in the polls by at least double digits for most of this campaign. Uh, we knew in less than an hour that he was the clear winner. Uh, he spoke to Lieutenant Governor Walter Dalton, thanked him for his service to the state. He also talked to the current governor, Beverly Perdue, who chose not to run again. Uh, he said she has been extremely helpful through this process and plans to work with her very closely during the transition. Uh, he said he ran a positive campaign to send a message to younger generation serving in government can be an honorable thing. That is the message that he wanted them to get. And he also said if you run a positive campaign, you can be a much more effective leader. He talked about leadership and the fact that people are hurting and worried about their future, and he wants to get to work about on that immediately. Here's what he said about leadership. But I do want to remind all of you that our goal was not just to become governor and get elected to this great office. Our goal was to be governor, to lead to lead. And that's what we plan to do when we plan to start that work tomorrow. And Pat McCrory, the former mayor of Charlotte, the first Republican governor in 20 years, and the first time the GOP has controlled the state legislature, the North Carolina House, the North Carolina Senate, as well as the governor's office since the 1880s. Expect big changes in early 2013, including an overhaul of the tax code. We're live in Uptown Charlotte, Russ Bowen, News 13. And McCrory's victory, of course, a huge blow for state Democrats. Now, governor Purdue chose not to seek a second term. The party's hopes rested on the lieutenant governor who just didn't have enough support. News 13's Frank Crocker is live at Walter Dalton's campaign headquarters in Raleigh. Frank? Well, it is still a very big night in this room for state Democrats who are watching those big screens with big hopes for the presidency. But for Walter Dor Dalton, the gubernatorial candidate, it was a very early evening. The Democrat from Rutherford County came into the Marriott Hotel ballroom with his family about 9 o'clock, shortly after speaking on the phone with Pat McCrory. Dalton told the crowd he is done with politics, but not with the principles and the message he brought to this campaign. I will continue in private life to live fully, caring about those things that matter. And I hope each and every one of you will live fully and carry that torch forward. Again, thank each and every one of you. Congratulations to Governor-elect McCrory. Let's all work together and move North Carolina forward. Thank you. Well, Walter Dalton did tell the crowd that it is on to private life for him. He did not elaborate what he did confirm is that he's going on vacation, that his wife Lucille certainly deserves one. Reporting live in Raleigh, Frank Crocker, News 13. Well, the 11th District Congressional seat was also a big one to watch tonight. That is the seat the Democrat Heath Shuler is giving up. And he, too, will be replaced by a Republican. Mark Meadows taking the victory against Democrat Hayden Rogers. There you see it, 99% of the precincts reporting. Meadows 57% to Rogers 43%. News 13's Ingrid Allstead is with the Meadows campaign here in Asheville. She joins us live from Biltmore Park. Ingrid. Yeah, we are inside the ballroom in the Hilton Hotel, and I can tell you I've seen a lot of hugs, a few tears, lots of high fives. Everyone's celebrating Republican Mark Meadows' victory tonight. I want to show you some video from about an hour ago as he took the stage thanking supporters, donors, and his family. He wanted to take the stage um, after speaking to competitor Hayden Rogers, which he did that, saying he thanked him for a clean race. Rogers also noted that Heath Schuler and he will help make it a clean transition. The new look 11th 
7th district did favor the conservative vote. So when asked if he was expected to win tonight, this is what Meadows had to say. If we had it in the bag, I wouldn't have worked all day at a poll in the, in the freezing rain. Uh, you know, we've, we've worked from day one as if we're in last place. And so uh, we're grateful uh, that to the people of Western North Carolina for the confidence uh, they placed in us. And earlier tonight, there were about 200 people filling this ballroom. The crowds have thinned a bit. Uh, people are still happy, hugging, as you can see all around me. Uh, a lot of folks have gone home. I'm sure they have a lot of sleep to make up on. Reporting live in South Asheville, Ingrid Allstead, News 13. Democrat Hayden Rogers is from Western North Carolina. His roots here in the mountains played a big part in his campaign. The News 13's Rex Hodge is streaming live tonight in Murphy. Rex. And here we are live once again at campaign headquarters for Hayden Rogers, who lost tonight in his bid to take over North Carolina's 11th congressional district seat, a seat that's been held by his former boss, Heath Schuler. They're both still here at Doyle's Cedar Hill Restaurant in Murphy, but this restaurant a couple hours ago was packed a couple hours ago when the race was called for Mark Meadows. He came forward and talked and said, Hayden Rogers did, said it was well worth the effort uh, to uh, give the people of Western North Carolina a choice here in the 11th district. Now, part of the reason for that steep hill, he says, is because the political map was redrawn last year, uh, taking Asheville out of the 11th district and putting it into the 10th district. He says when that happened, he lost an awful lot of votes that would have gone in the Democratic camp. So that's part of the reason for that steep hill. Um, didn't really expect particularly well night win this thing, but he says it was worth the challenge, worth putting up the effort and giving people, once again, as stated, uh, the people of Western North Carolina a choice here in the district in Western North Carolina. So a tough night for the Democrats tonight, but Hayden Rogers says life goes on. He was here with his family, his wife, two daughters, and they look forward to some family time together. And he says, you know, you win, you lose political races, life goes on, plans to do some fishing tomorrow morning. Reporting live tonight from Murphy, Rex Hodge, News 13. I think he said he also had on his agenda looking for a job. Find a job, you bet. Well, incumbent Republican Patrick McHenry has won re-election in the newly drawn 10th District Congressional seat, going back to Washington for a fifth term. He defeated Buncombe County's Patsy Kieber. News 13's Megan Shearing is streaming live tonight in Gastonia. That's where Patrick McHenry is celebrating another term. This, uh, this was not unexpected at all, Megan. Well, it was an exciting night here in Gastonia. Voters in the 10th District re-elected Congressman Patrick McHenry. He will now head back to Washington to serve his fifth term in Congress. Now, the room was full of cheers when McHenry took the stage to give his victory speech. He thanked his family. He thanked his supporters. He thanked volunteers and also his staff. He says his campaign forced new challenges because of the redistricting and the lines being re redrawn here in the 10th District. McHenry now represents most of Asheville and parts of Buncombe County, and he wants constituents here to know or there to know is that he's going to work for them and he will make change. He says his first order of business when he gets back to Washington is to help small businesses in the seven counties he serves. With the district change, I, I want to make sure that we're actively engaged in all seven counties of the district. Uh, Buncombe County and Polk County are very important economically. Uh, Buncombe County is the economic center of the West, and so I, I want to make sure that we pay close attention to what's happening in the community. Congressman McHenry says this race was hard fought. He says that Patsy Kiever did give him a call. She conceded. She congratulated him on his re-election. She says, or he says, that uh, he is looking forward to what the future now holds for the 10th District. Reporting live in Gastonia tonight, Megan Shearing, News 13. And Patsy Kiever very gracious in conceding to McHenry. She said the focus of her campaign was the people, and she honors their decision. News 13's John Lee joins us live with the Kiever camp at Pax Tavern in Nashville. John, you talked to her earlier. What's next for her life? Well, Patsy Kiever uh, made her concession speech, and then in a more poignant uh, moment, really made her rounds as she walked around the room here. She was consoled and embraced and hugged by supporters. She thanked them for their time and, in some cases, for their money as well. Of course, she knew she faced an uphill climb uh, in a uh, typically conservative district. But uh, here's what she said after conceding. 
know, we've got to continue to work, uh, and we have to continue to work together. And I just hope that the gridlock in Congress, you know, will break. And the, now that the election is over uh, shortly, you know, that people will begin to work better together. That's what I hope. And uh, as you might expect from a former Buncombe County educator, she quoted Dr. Seuss and then walked away from the podium. Reporting live in Asheville, I'm John Lee, News 13. Well, there's no doubt that the campaigns will be analyzing this election for days to come. Let's toss things over to News 13's Tammy Watford, who is with Dr. Chris Cooper, a political science professor from Western Carolina University. Tammy? Yeah, Chris, thanks so much for being with us. Let's talk about the presidential race. Now, we know that Mitt Romney early on carried South Carolina, right. and just moments ago, it was announced that he carried North Carolina. A surprise for some people, but not for others. Yeah, I mean, obviously South Carolina wasn't much of a surprise at all. He probably could have called that one in, in 1978. <laughs> but, uh, you know, North Carolina was right. a little bit more of a surprise. It was tight for a long time. Um, he squeaked it out. I think that's kind of what we expected to see, uh, but it was maybe even a little bit closer than we thought. And what about the other swing states that are still too close to call, as, yeah. as far as I know? No, that, the last couple of minutes. that's exactly right. So Ohio, Florida, Colorado, this race still rests on all those states that we thought it was going to rest on. So far, most states, have, actually, I think every state has broken essentially the way we thought it would. So mm -hmm. it's been a, a good day for data geeks thus far, and it'll right. be really interesting to see what happens with these swing states. So do you think it's going to come down to those swing states then? Is that... Yeah, no, abs absolutely. Romney is going to have to uh, to march on. He's going to have to win um, Virginia, Virginia and Florida, Ohio. One of these sort of combinations mm -hmm. of these bigger swing states still left. Colorado is still out there. Iowa, I believe, is still out there. So there still are a few, and there's some paths to victory for Romney, but they're getting a little bit smaller. So it sounds like a waiting game. We continue, right? It is. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Chris. Darcel, Larry.